Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the 30 minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. You can see we're testing this support resistance line here at the top of this pennant formation. You can see that it took a number of days to build up. A lot of it was on fairly heavy volume and we broke out through the top of the pennant and then came back down. You can see now we're testing down to see how far we can go into the body of this pennant before we find support. Now the volume is significantly lower. You can see the downtrend in the volume and we're not really seeing anything. You can see the markets moving but we're really not seeing anything in volume wise even though we're seeing a fairly significant price move if we move in here to the one minute chart we can see that there's a kind of a sell-off happening right now would it be unusual for there to be a sell-off before a holiday or something like that after hours that would be quite normal so the big question is can we get the, all of this volume to hold that came back in and keep the rally going you can see that we broke down through this trend line and so short term wise we're in a correction phase is it a rolling over it doesn't look to be a rolling over but it could be I would be very surprised to see another test of these lows I would think that it would take tremendous volume if we can get down to these lows again without tremendous volume that's going to be kind of an indication that there's just nothing accurate at all about these figures now gold is kind of going sideways here we had and I'll go to the story here in a minute we had a big huge move in the futures price supposedly apparently that is now being explained as a glitch but you can see the long-term downtrend line here we still have about that 1250 price we need to get through to sustain a rally and I think that glitch price was somewhere like up in here or something like that. Some ridiculous number. So let's go over to that story. Um, that is, this is covered here on Gold Core by Marco Burn. Gold spiked higher in many price feeds overnight and was $270 higher or more than 22% higher to 1467 So yeah, that put it right about in here. So you can see that that's would be quite a move and that would be almost nearly a reversal of the trend would take us to challenging this support way back up there. There was speculation that the price spike which came while the COMEX was closed for 30 minutes was due to a series of charting errors or misprints, a bad price feed or a computer glitch. Another example of how technology is a great enabler, but also can be a great disabler. Despite a very bullish backdrop of the Swiss gold referendum on Sunday, gold repatriation movements in Europe, Russian central bank gold buying, and a very robust Indian Chinese demand, there was no breaking news that would justify such a dramatic uptick in gold. The usual suspects were a fat finger trade by a large hedge fund or bank, this was quick, quickly discounted as the price moved higher in a series of trades over a period of minutes rather than in one or two trades. And I was watching that. That's exactly what it did. It was upticking about every 30 seconds to a minute. A classic example of this was the huge fat finger trade that brought Knight Securities to their knees. In 2012, U.S. market maker Knight Capital Group almost went bankrupt after it lost more than $450 million when its computers made erroneous orders that couldn't be undone. The firm was later sold. And so it goes into these. I've talked about these before. Flash crashes. Now it's interesting that with gold we had a flash crash to the upside. But again, it's computers. This is all just computer driven nonsense. And they're giving you warning signs here that it is not it is not all as it appears to be that these prices can move in a dramatic fashion uh, with no explanation and of course I believe it was in the case of it wasn't night but it was um, one of these here it is the nature of the technical issues was not disclosed 
And that's just about the case in every instance, although the May flash crash they blamed on some little firm. So that's a that's a big warning sign that they're giving you that these markets can't be trusted and that they can pretty much put the price anywhere they want to put it. Now, here's another really big warning sign. This story is from Consumerist. Wells Fargo refusing to honor widow's 30-year-old CD. And there's a picture of it. In 1984, an Arizona man invested more than $18,000 in a certificate of deposit at First Interstate Bank and then placed that CD away in his family's personal records where it sat for 25 years. Then in 2009, after he passed away, his widow discovered the CD and attempted to cash it out only to be denied by First Interstate's new owner, Wells Fargo. The widow tells KPHO TV in Phoenix that she and her late husband frequently placed their money in CDs when they owned a towing company. Going back in the 80s, that was the way you made your money, she explains. But when she tried to get the money that she believes is rightfully hers, she, the bank practically almost laughed at me. KPHO claims that Wells Fargo refused to comment on the story but claim in court documents that it had no records of the CD and believes it's possible that it could have already been paid out at some point in the past, pointing out that First Interstate had a policy of allowing customers to retain paid out certificates. The widow insists that her late husband never cashed out the CD while her lawyer notes that the CD states that it must be presented and surrendered in order to be redeemed. Now, even if you think about their argument that they let people keep those, then there would be a stamp on it. I mean, come on. this That is absolutely patently absurd to think that, uh, that they would give them back after they'd been redeemed, but they wouldn't even stamp them as redeemed. This is basically a bearer bond. That's essentially what this is. So that's the value of the full faith and credit of the banks. And that's not surprising. That's another warning sign. Now, the bank says they don't have a record of it. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that we have all these records being destroyed by these banks? We had the same thing go on with the mortgage thing. We had the flooding and the fire at the DTCC. So, and as I pointed out in a video uh, earlier about Ed Sakota and his comment about calculating the value of a penny since the time of Christ at 3% interest and his explanation of why these systems have to be wiped out. So here we see an example of where a 30 year just in a 30 year time frame and you know there's 30 year bonds but just in a 30 year time frame we have a bank taken over by another bank and oh mysteriously the records are gone so a lot of people would say well they would have been better off to buy stocks well maybe uh, it turns out so far that it looks like they would have been better to buy stocks but maybe that uh, situation hasn't exploded yet and maybe the same thing's going to happen there. So that's a really big warning sign. And speaking of the stock market, let's take a look at the Dow Jones transportation average here. You can see here, this is pretty clearly a warning sign that we have a parabolic move in this market. Now, this absolutely dwarfs the dot-com bubble and the financial crisis top. You can see how parabolic this market has gone. And the close actually was 9203, so that's up here above 9,000. You can see when we had the statement by the Fed head and we started to get a correction, reversed himself, then the BOJ came in and started printing money. So when will it end? We don't know when it's gonna end, but a parabolic thing can't go on forever. It's gonna crash back to earth. We just don't know when. Um, it's gone further than anybody could ever imagine, and it's taken some very, very desperate measures to do so. Let's start off with, and I'm gonna look at Japan after I look at the United States, but let's look at the United States here, the interest rates. This is what it's taken to do what they've done, and you can see the flat line. This is from 1990 to 2014, but let's put it to, say, 
2000 to 2014. And you can see it's flatlined. That is dead. That's a flatline. That's a dead economy. And as Peter Schiff and Jim Willie and others have said, there's no way out of this thing. Uh, it's it, They're going to run it to the end of the line. I think the way out of it, of course, is going to be a worldwide financial collapse. But let's take a look at Japan and their zero interest rate policy just to see how long this sort of thing can go on. So if we go to Japan and we look at interest rate, they had their market top of their stock market in about 1990. And you can see here that Japanese interest rates effectively hit zero. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt here, this three quarter percent effectively their interest rates hit zero in about 1999 and they have been at zero percent interest rates now for 15 years straight so there is a flat line you can see a little bit of an uptick in 2008 but pretty much flat line is that going to be our future is that what it's going to be like for the next 10 years in the united states I hope not. I hope that this system comes to an end before we go another 10 years with zero interest rates. But as you can see, with Wells Fargo refusing to honor a CD when interest rates are higher, we don't even need for the system to completely reset. Uh, they're, they're doing individual resets already by losing the documents. And we see this on Wall Street all the time. When companies are bought out, the, the people that control Wall Street, these are people who sit on interlocking boards. You have people who sit on multiple boards and they flip these companies. One of the reasons they do that is because the way they make all their money is by cashing out their stock options. So they drive the price of the stock way, way high, cash out their options, flip the company, execute everything and then start over uh, wash rinse and repeat that's how it's done on wall street and uh, as i said many times the game is the transfer of money from main street to wall street we've had some of the pension funds uh, some of the if you've read the latest matt taibbi on rolling stone and uh, basically it's an explanation of how JP Morgan bribed their way out of of going to jail, which is what should have happened, uh, by paying about a nine billion dollar fine, and they had a lot of these victims because they were basically sold toxic mortgage debt, and the whistleblowers were telling them that. Of course, the whistleblowers just get fired, and so JP Morgan cut a deal with the Justice Department to pay a fine, but nevertheless. There are still lawsuits by the teachers' retirement funds, uh, other pension funds, and state municipal government. So that tells you who's getting burned when the banks play these games. It's ultimately people's retirement that they're stealing because it is essentially a zero-sum game. There really isn't any growth in the system right now, so it's just a matter of Wall Street stealing from Main Street. So those are some very, very serious warning signs. Uh, we've got glitches in the gold price uh, that they can't explain. We've got interest rates going to zero and flatlining and dying. We've got banks refusing to honor their promises. And we know that they've put bail-in clauses now to where if they decide to, they can just take your money. And then, of course, we have the markets and we have the bizarre activity with uh, glitches in gold and strange computer glitches in the stock market. All of these are very, very important warning signs that if your money is in the stock market, if your money is invested in CDs or bonds, instruments of debt, if your money is held in a bank, if your money is in a retirement fund, there can all of a sudden just be a glitch and poof, your money's gone. And we'll talk to you next time.